Welcome back, everybody. Uh, we are to the last part of chapter four. Uh, we are going to be counting. So for example, 27, how many meals are possible? You can choose an appetizer, an entree, and a dessert. There are three available appetizers, two available entrees, and two available desserts. What I'm going to do is um, I'm going to map this out so we can see what we're doing. So there are three appetizers. And from there, you can choose one of two entrees. And from there, we can choose one of two desserts. giving us a lot of meals. So I could have this appetizer with this entree with this dessert, this appetizer with this entree with the other dessert, this appetizer with the other entree with this dessert and so on. And so you can see this is a lot of different meals. And actually, if we just count these last ones, we'll know exactly how many. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. 12 different meals. And um, it kind of makes sense because I have three choices with the appetizers. I have two choices with the entrees and I have two choices with the desserts. You can see we're getting that, which leads us to the multiplication rule of counting. If a task consists of a sequence of choices in which there are uh, P selections for the first choice and Q selections for the second choice, the task of making these selections can be done in P times Q different ways. Example 28, a woman, 48, has four skirts and three blouses. How many different skirt blouse combinations can she wear? Well, that's gonna be four times three or 12 skirt blouse combinations. Part B, you've been hired as a representative of Cypress College. You must travel to four local high schools to introduce yourself on the first day of school. How many different routes for the day are possible if no school is to be visited twice? I'm going to draw us a little picture with this one so we can get a better idea of what's happening here. So we have Cypress College, and then we have four schools that we have to, um, four, yeah. So this is school number one, school number two, school number three, and school number four. And how many different routes are there? Well, I could start here, then go here, then back here, and then there, that's one route. And you can see there's gonna be a lot of different routes. And once you pick a route, it drops down. So let's, with that visual in mind, part B, it looks like once I pick, which is my first one, I have four choices to choose from. But after I've chosen one of them, I now only have three to choose from. And after I've chosen those first two, I only have two left. And then the last one. This brings us to, Four times three is 12 times two is 24 routes. Part C, how many ways can a musician plan on performing five different pieces of music for a concert and no piece is gonna be played more than once? Well, again, we start out by having five choices to pick from. Then there's only four, then three, then two, then one. That is going to be, I believe, 120 combination of music. And that leads us to what a factorial is. 
the factorial, we use the, um, uh, the um, exclamation point symbol for factorial. And n factorial is going to be n times n minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, and so on, all the way down to times 1. And we define 0 factorial as 1. I'd like to show you where that is on this type of calculator. If you have a different one, you'll have to find where that is. Um, most calculators have them, even the, the simple um, the calculators. All right. So we are going to go to math. And I want to go over to probability. And there's my factorial. This factorial, I'm going to type the numbers, hit math, go to probability, and select the, X, uh, the uh, factorial button. So for A, 6 factorial is 720. For B, we have 10 factorial. So once again, 10 math probability number four. These things get really big really fast, <laughs> as you can see. So 3,628,800. Part C, 20 factorial. I want you to point, see this here, that E. That means times 10 to the, in this case, 18th power. So here's how we would write this. We have a couple of options. 2.43 times 10 to the 18th. Or we could write, if we can move that decimal 18 places that way. I'm not going to do that. <laughs> so our last option, D here, 70 factorial. Seventy factorial, and it's too big. Uh, this particular computer uh, can't handle a number that large, so it just says, "Sorry, I'm, I'm quitting. I'm done." So, too big. There are, of course, computers that can handle something like this, just not my particular calculator. All right, so let's use factorial. So we have counting. Part A, three letter codes are assigned to represent airport locations. Letters may be repeated. How many different airport codes are possible? Now this is like LAX, JFK uh, for different airports. And um, in this case, there are three and they can be repeated. And for each choice on this, there are 26 letters to choose from. So this is actually 26 raised to the third power. Codes. Part B, for the lock shown, this lock here, uh, the combination to open the lock consists of four digits. Repetition is allowed. If you are picking your combination, how many different options do you have? Well, on each ring, there are 10 options. Since we can repeat, we get 10 options for each one. So this is 10 to the fourth power. 10 to the fourth power which is 10,000. 10,000 combos. Suppose that a local area network requires eight letters for usernames. Lower and uppercase are considered the same. How many usernames are possible for the local area network? All right, so we have once again, uh, since they are letters, it's going to be 26 to the eighth power. This is going to be a crazy big number. 
26 raised to the 8. So once again, we're getting scientific notation. 2.088 times 10 to the 11th. And I could write that out. So 2088270646. So I've moved it 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. That's a 4. So, so that's 100,000 million billion, 208 billion, 827 million, and so on. A lot of possibilities. <laughs> Part D. A three cylinder combination lock has 40 numbers, 0 to 39. To open it, you go uh, counterclockwise and clockwise, and so on. So, this is basically going to be we have a choice of 40. three times. And we can, repetition is allowed, yeah, 40. So this is of course, 40 to the third power, like 64,000 or something. Let's see, 40, third power, yeah. Combos. Oh, and these are usernames. And you can imagine how big that number is going to be if um, capital is not the same uh, as, as lowercase. And then we include all the special characters. And so if you see those numbers are going to get really large really fast. If you randomly guess each of the three numbers, what is the probability of guessing the lock combination on the first try? So that we're back to related this one. So that's going to be a one in 64,000 chance. And I'm not even going to divide that out. That's silly. All right. All right. So counting without rep uh, repetition. Three members from a 10 member committee are to be randomly selected to serve as president, vice president, and secretary. Meaning the first person chosen is gonna be the president, the second person chosen to be the vice president, third person chosen to be the secretary. And that's what I just read. Uh, how many different committee structures are possible? So the very first choice, there are 10 people to choose from. However, once we've chosen a person, we're now down to nine people. And once we've chosen those two people, we're down to eight people. And there's my three committee. So this is going to be 10 times 9 times 8, 720. Committee structures. All right, part B, how many three letter words uh, can you form using the letters in the word words? So here we are. Um, if no letter may be repeated. And when they say how many words, that th these aren't real words necessarily. So we have five times four times three times two times one. It's basically five factorial. Oh, well, there are only three three letter words. My bad, so that's not. So this is five times four times three, which is 60 words. Permutations and combinations. Here we go. So suppose these four animals compete in a race. List all possible outcomes for first and second place, and then how many, um, how many different race results are possible if first and second place are recorded? So we have some unusual animals here. We have a kangaroo, which I'm going to call K. We have an anteater, which I'm going to call A. We have a possum, which I know technically starts with an O, but I'm going to start with a P. And a dog. Now, 
it's going to be different if the kangaroo comes in first and the anteater comes in second, or if the anteater comes in first and the kangaroo comes in second. That's different. So we're going to list all of the possibilities. Kangaroo and the anteater. Kangaroo, the possum. Kangaroo, the dog. Now we have the anteater and the kangaroo, which is different than this, first and second place. Anteater, the possum, anteater, and the dog. Next up, we have the possum and the kangaroo. We have the possum, the anteater. We have the possum and the dog. And last but not least, we have the dog and the kangaroo. We have the dog and the anteater. The dog and the possum. So, how many are there? One, two, three, four, by three, that's 12. And in this case, I'm going to make a real big deal. The order matters, meaning the K is first, the A is second, is different than the A is first, K is second. And this gives us a total of 12 possibilities. Now we're going to change a little bit. Now consider adopting two of the animals. Now the order does not matter. So in this case, the order does not matter. All right, so now if we want to list out the possibilities, we have the kangaroo and the anteater, the kangaroo and the possum, the kangaroo and the dog. Now the anteater. Now the anteater and kangaroo, that's the same as the kangaroo and the anteater now, because orders are relevant. You're still getting two pets. So this is going to be the anteater and the possum, the anteater and the dog. And last up, we have the possum and the dog. Six possibilities. Abilities. Now, it don't, it's not a rule that the one's always half of the other. That's definitely not true. That just happens to work out in this case. So you can see, we need to understand if the order matters or not. Combinations. Combinations are uh, when out of n objects, uh, r are taken at a time. And, uh, com and we're using the word combination very specific in, in this case. This is very much a, a mathematic uh, way of, of wording this. A combination is a collection without regard to order. That is the big deal. Order does not matter. Meaning this one would be the combination. And the way we calculate it is we're here. So we have n factorial over n minus r factorial times r factorial on the bottom. Uh, this is the notation that you will most likely use um, for this class. Um, in higher mathematics, we always use this notation. Uh, and sometimes um, you, you'll hear me say, instead of n combination r, I'll say n choose r. That's also a common way to refer to that. Um, combinations are how lotteries work. The numbers are drawn one at a time. And if you have the lucky numbers, the order doesn't matter, you win. All right, example 32. Suppose lottery balls are numbered 1 through 52 and are randomly chosen without replacement. And I think we know how that goes. So part A is a combination. So this is going to be 52 choose 6. How many possibilities are there? And by the way, this is your probability of, of winning the lottery right now. So I'm going to type in 52. And I'm going to go to the same place I got my factorial. I'm going to go to math, ability, and there's my combination right there. 52 combination 6 is a little over. A little over 20 million chances to 1. 
So the probability to win is one divided by 20,358,520. And I'm not gonna write that out. You can see that's gonna be a very, very small number. And um, yeah, let's try the second part, part B. From a school committee of 18 members, five will choose to serve on a subcommittee to study student rights. How many different subcommittee structures are possible? So in this committee, it doesn't matter the order. We, we don't have like the first one's president, second one's vice president and so on. So the order doesn't matter in this case. So this is gonna be 18, choose five. So 18, math, choose. All right. Now we are to permutations. Now the order matters. So this would be like the race, or the order mattered. A permutation is an ordered arrangement. So the order does matter in which our objects are chosen from n different objects and uh, repetition is not allowed. The number of permutations of R objects selected from n objects is represented by, here's the formula for this. And you can see it's a little different than the other one. The other one has the extra R factorial in the denominator because we have to divide out uh, the, the, the extra in there. Here we don't. All right, example 33, here we go. Okay. See if anyone higher. Yeah. Scott is putting together an exercise routine and feels that the sequence of exercises can affect his overall performance. He has 12 exercises to select from, but only has enough time to do nine. How many different exercise routines could he put together? Well, in this case, he's saying that the order does matter, meaning if he goes running first and then does push ups and pull ups, he's going to get a different result than if he does um, pull ups, push ups, and then runs. Um, so the order uh, matters in this case. So we're going to be using a permutation. So this is going to be 12 permutation 9. And these numbers are typically much larger. So 12 math, and you can see a probability. There it is, number 2. Uh, if you don't have this type of calculator, um, you can still do this on most calculators. You just need to find it on your own. So you can see how large that number is. So this is 79833600. So I don't think Scott is going to get to all of those. B. How many ways can six people be chosen and arranged in a straight line? So the, the arrangement matters in this case, the order matters. If there are eight people to choose from, Eight permutation six. Twenty thousand one hundred sixty. Routines. This was lines. Part C, there are seven books in the Harry Potter series. How many ways are there to read the books? Um, if the books are read in random order, what's probably that they um, are written the way that they were written? Okay, so there's two ways we can do this. Because we're reading all seven of the books, this is just uh, seven factorial. It's also seven, per, seven permutation seven. Excuse me. All right, and I'm going to show you that it's both seven factorial, fifty forty, and seven permutation seven is fifty forty. These two are giving the same results as they should.
All right. So combinations and permutations. All right, so now, what if we have repetitions? Well, it's going to be n factorial over n sub one factorial times n sub two factorial times times n sub m factorial. And I'll explain that here in just a moment. So for number one, okay. So here we have, want to know how many different numbers can we rearrange uh, these six numbers here? Well, that's going to be six, because they're distinct, that's just going to be six factorial. Six factorial. Now the second group, you can see we have repetition. I have two of them there, I have three of them there. So this is going to be six factorial divided by two factorial times So six factorial I have here divided by, and I'm gonna use parentheses, two factorial times three factorial, which gives us 60. Number two, how many different vertical arrangements if there are eight flags, and part A says it's all a different color, and that's going to be eight factorial. Arrangements. Part B says, what if Three of them are white, two are blue, and three are red. Well, that's going to be eight factorial over three factorial times two factorial factorial times three factorial. Using my parentheses again. Three factorial times two factorial times three factorial. Five hundred and sixty. Now the reason we have to divide those out is because if I have if I have two blue right next to each other and then I switch them, that's still the same combination. So we have to divide out all those extra combinations there. And number three will go here. A family has six children and exactly two boys. How many different birth and sex orders are possible? Well, that's going to be six factorial divided by exactly two boys. That's going to be two factorial times four factorial because the girls. There's two boys. That means there's four girls. So this is going to be six factorial divided by, use your parentheses, two factorial times four factorial. Fifteen different arrangements. All right. We have some additional practice. Usually when I'm in class with this, I have the students do this, but um, I'll go through it with us. An essay has 12, uh, test, has 12 questions. Students are required to answer eight of the 12 questions. How many different sets of questions could be answered? Well, the order doesn't matter. 
So this is of the 12 questions. This is now a combination because the order doesn't matter. So this extra practice is for you to figure out which of the techniques that we just learned, the counting techniques that we just learned, which do I use? In this case, it's a combination because again, the order is irrelevant when you're taking a test, right? You can start with number seven if you want, it doesn't matter. 12 combination, eight, um, three and then eight. Four hundred and ninety five sets. <clears throat> Number two. If a new model of your favorite car is um, entering the market and has two engine types, <clears throat> two vehicle styles, three optional packages, eight exterior colors, and two interior colors, how many different cars are possible? Well, this is the one where we just multiply everything together. Two times two times three times eight times two. Three times eight times two. 192 cars. Number three, five basketball players from a team of 12 are randomly selected to attend a training camp. How many different groups can be sent to the training camp? Now, in this case, we have to ask, does the order matter? of how they're selected? And the answer is no, order does not matter. So because the order doesn't matter, it's gonna be, what is it, 12 permutation five. And I wanna go back to Remember the order doesn't, oh, I, I meant combination. So I'm back to here without regard to our order. So once again, we have 12 combination, five. Two uh, basketball players, actually groups of basketball players. Number four, so let's squeeze four over here. In a race with 12 competitors, medals are awarded for first, second, and third place. How many possible ways are there to award the medals? So this one, the order does matter. So this is going to be 12 competitors permutation now in three. Because again, in this case, the order does matter. So 12 math permutation, three. 1,320. And this is arrangements of, of medals number five. If four students in our classroom that has 10 vacant seats, how many ways can they be seated? So in this case, the order does matter. So this is gonna give us the 10 permutation four. Ways that they can be seated because the, the order does matter. If someone's on my left or they're on my right, that's a different uh, way of seating arrangement. There is counting. 